Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Tissue Regenics Group PLC final results investor presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab that's just situated in the right hand corner of your screen. Please simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it received during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet Company dashboard and we'll notify you by email when these are ready for your review. Before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll and if you'd give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company will be most grateful. And I'll now like to hand you over to CEO Daniel Lee. Good afternoon to you, sir. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who's uh, logged in uh, to spend some time with us as we've just released our 2021 results. Uh, we'll spend the next uh, 25 minutes discussing the company, our activities, uh, the successful results from 2021, and our plans for the future. And as, as we, we will take uh, questions at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> the next slide, of course, is our disclaimer slide, and I encourage all of you to review these at, uh, at, uh, at your leisure. So to introduce the presenters, my name is Daniel Lee. I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Tissue Regenics. I was appointed CEO in, um, in November of 2020. I had originally joined the Tissue Regenics organization as the president of US operations for the cell right, uh, for the cell right uh, division. Um, I have over 30 years of experience in, in the medical, uh, the healthcare uh, arena. Uh, first in uh, medical devices, as well as uh, biologic products. And these range from companies that were startups as well as to established companies. Well, one of the reasons that I joined Tissue Regenics was that one of the things I was intrigued about as an organization that had some great technologies and some great products, and it just required some focus as well as execution to really move things forward for the organization and realize the shareholder value. So at this point, I'd like to, uh, David Koch, our Chief Financial Officer, to introduce himself. Hey, thank you, Danny. Um, I joined the group in January of 2021, about 14 months ago. Uh, and before I joined the group, um, the due diligence I did really focused on understanding the, the products, the platforms, and, and the customer base of the of tissue regenics, and I uh, was attracted by all three of those. As Danny said, I, I was very solid product platform technologies in our bio rinse and D cell. Um, but maybe more important to me was the, the kind of strength of customer relationships that uh, Tissue Regenics has. Um, the, the customer list is a, a blue chip one and those customers don't undertake those relationships lightly. So very impressed with the, the customer list before I joined the group. Um, by way of background, I've got 30 years of experience in the medical device space. Um, I started, ran, and then sold a medical device contract manufacturing company. Uh, along the way, having the chance to work with Danny, uh, a CFO at Aperion Biologics. So um, another one of the reasons I wanted to join the group, having a chance to, to work with Danny. And I think um, as we get through the results uh, today, you'll see that you know that was a wise decision because He's done a great job this year for tissue regenics. Um, I started my career on Wall Street, uh, first in inv investment banking at Solomon Brothers, and then in corporate finance at uh, GE Capital. And excited to be here and talk more about our uh, results uh, for today. Thanks, David. So at this point, uh, we're going to turn off the cameras on David and myself. So this way, the the slides are a little bit uh, bigger for all of you in the in the audience, and then we'll uh, we'll go to uh, the next slide. So a little bit about an overview uh, about the company. For those of you who are not familiar with Tissue Regenics, we are a global healthcare organization that is focused in the area of regenerative medicine. Now, regenerative medicine is a unique discipline. It's a it's one of the fastest growing areas in in healthcare. And with regenerative medicine, what we are trying to do is regrow, regrow, replace 
uh, repair the cells, organs, and tissue. And you're also utilizing the body's innate ability to heal itself. Now, what tissue regenics has developed is uh, tissue-based scaffolds, which are a pivotal part of regenerative medicine. And we've done this using two core technology platforms, D-Cell as well as BioRinse. And both of these technology platforms share the objective of preserving the inherent biologic, biochemical, or biomechanical properties of the tissue through a gentle processing process, which is, produces a safe and sterile graft, but also, uh, of course, is, is biologically friendly. So the company is well positioned to be a contributor in transforming healthcare through regenerative medicine. Now these tissue platforms are utilized in allograft as well as xenograft tissue, which makes the company very unique in the global marketplace. We have manufacturing uh, capabilities in the United States, United Kingdom, as well as Germany. Our extensive product portfolio covers a number of different product uh, products as well as tissue platforms and numerous surgical specialties, which we'll discuss uh, during this presentation. And then we also have significant strategic partnerships and strong distributors in all the markets in, in which we participate. Now, a little bit of a focus on 2021. Um, David and I have only been in, in, the, in our roles for about a year. And one of the things I'd like to highlight is that our commercially focused as well as experienced management team, uh, we've really developed, delivered, and we've had, have had great progress under some very, very difficult times. Historically, as I mentioned, you know, for me, the company had great technology and products, but historically a lack of focus and execution. So during this time, we implemented uh, the 4S focus strategy for the organization. Uh, this was, became part of the framework for the organization, and it was a clear direction of travel for the group. This is from the CEO on down through everyone throughout the organization. And so far, it is working. Now the four S's are supply, sales, revenue, sustainability, and scale. And I'll talk a little bit more about the four S's uh, later on in the presentation. But supply within a tissue-based business, it's not a simple business. Uh, it requires a great deal of focus on whether acquiring the tissue as well as processing the tissue. Revenue, we grew tissue regenics in 2021 by 20% year on year. Our total revenue was just shy of 20 million US dollars. And this growth uh, was, was accomplished during, again, a very difficult year of 2021, but it was also due in part that we're gaining market share with our products. We also ended 2021 with $7.7 .7 million in cash on hand. So we are fully funded to profitability. Now, with respect to the markets in which we play, the US and global markets for our products are quite substantial. So we have much more headroom in terms of market opportunity and thus scale. So our highlight for 2021 was that uh, this team, which has the expertise uh, delivered, we have a great future and uh, we will continue to deliver. A little bit about our, our, our uh, product portfolio and our technology platforms. So our bone products utilize the BioRinse bio technology platform. Our leading bone product is Consultrate which is a demineralized bone matrix product. Clinicians who are the ultimate users of the product know this product to be one that is easily handled and uh, they enjoy using the product. But most importantly, it is a 100% bone product, which is verified, every batch is verified for osteoinductivity. Osteoinductivity is a testing methodology to make sure that this bone product can form bone. 
So that's incredibly important for any surgeon when they're using this product in orthopedics, spine, and or trauma. The D-cell processing platform. Uh, this platform is known by its ability to remove 99% of the DNA within uh, from the tissue. The leading product in this category is Dermapure, which is a human dermis product. Dermapure is also noted for its ease, uh, easy handling, uh, ease of handling properties. But when clinicians use this product, they note how readily accepted it is by the body and how quickly it incorporates, whether it's used internally in a surgical indication or externally in wound care. The last technology uh, processing platform is, is limited to our uh, birth tissue or our perinatal products. AmnioWorks is our leading product in this category, which is an amniotic membrane. And it is, this product is used in wound care as well as ophthalmology. And clinicians also have noted how well it performs in their patients. So a little bit more detail surrounding the processing platforms. Our BioRinse technology platform performed quite well in 2021, as we saw 33% year-on-year growth uh, mainly driven by our demineralized bone matrix products, as well as also our amniotic tissue products. The, this outperformed, we outperformed the marketplace, which norm, which some other competitors or comparators only demonstrated single digit market growth. Our BioWins products are used in numerous surgical specialties. Our existing uh, uh, strategic partnerships uh, such as with Arthrex and our new partnerships with newer uh, newer companies uh, continue to grow this business. And as I mentioned earlier, we are taking market share from in, in this space. Also in 2021, we com completed our phase one expansion of our manufacturing facility. This expansion, which was completed on time and on budget, allows us to have increased capacity and increased flexibility with how we process. As a result, in 2021, we saw a 25% increase in our ability to process uh, the BioRinse product, uh, products. The other thing that we also saw in 2021 was that we were able to fulfill all orders on time with no back orders. The next processing te technology platform is the D-cell portfolio products. And the D-cell products were more affected by the events of the past two years, the effects of the pandemic and the effects of the delays of elective surgery. So when we as a management team looked at the D-cell business, we, we um, noted that it required really a restructuring of the operation as well as the commercial strategy, which was first implemented in January of 2021 and then implemented throughout the year of 2021. Now this reorganization, especially on the commercial strategy side, was to reinvigorate the team and drive the growth of our commercial team. What we're trying to achieve there is move our commercial team closer to the customer and remove layers of sales management that has historically been part of that organization. Instead of having a vertical management group, we now have a much more horizontal uh, management group, which can make decisions, rapid decisions in a rapidly changing marketplace. And we, uh, we also added more products uh, to the portfolio to supplement the variety of products in which we're able to offer. And we know that and we're confident that this restructuring of our commercial organization on our D-cell line will put that uh, business back on the right trajectory. And we know that because our urogynecological partner, Arms Medical, we saw their sales increase in 2021 by uh, 24%. So another product that also utilizes the D-cell technology platform is OrthoPure XT. Which is, the, which is the only xenograft tissue that's uh, currently 
approved for use in, uh, in, in ligament reconstruction uh, procedures. This product was approved uh, through the CE Mark process in um, mid 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. And we're in the process of reintroducing this product into uh, uh, limited markets. Some of you may have noted that uh, two weeks ago, we noted, uh, we announced our relationship with Geislick, uh, Geislick Biomaterials as our exclusive distributor for this product in the, in the, um, in the country of Italy. <clears throat> Just a few moments about the, some of the new products we introduced in 2021. This is all designed to drive continued organic growth. Our Dermapure Mesh product is a product line addition that allows for greater wound coverage and it saves the surgeon time in the operating room. Many surgeons will take a piece of Dermis product and they will mesh it themselves and may take them 20 minutes and may take them 40 minutes. So we take all that, uh, that extra effort out of their hands and have a pre-meshed product for them. The Matrix ND, this is a dermograph that's used in dentistry that is commonly used uh, when, sur uh, when the dental surgeon is trying to bone graft, trying to augment the bone, whether from an extraction or trying to augment the mandible, uh, they frequently use some type of a graft to, to as coverage. So this is a product that complements our dental bone grafts and was actually something that was requested by many of our dental uh, strategic partners. And then the last product we introduced the other product we introduced in 2021 was VNU. This is a pre-shaped dermal graft for pelvic organ prolapse procedures, POP procedures. Uh, this is frequently performed in women post-childbirth, and this is product is available exclusively through Arms Medical, our urogynecological partner. Now, when we look at regenerative medicine and the, the independent market research confirms that regenerative medicine continues to grow and will continue to grow in the future. At Tissue Regenics, we have the opportunity to restore the quality of life uh, in numerous surgical specialties with our, with our tissue-based products. Um, the other thing that we do, especially with our human taste tissue products, is that we are able to maximize the gift of human, to, uh, uh, human tissue donation. So it's something that's very important to us as an organization, not only helping uh, patients who are the recipients, but also the uh, donor families who, who, are, who donate the tissue of their loved one. So our organization though is continued on, uh, to focus on the ongoing commercialization of our existing as well as new products to, uh, to meet unmet market needs. So now I'd like to spend some time on the four S's, which drives, uh, drive, drove our company in 2021 and will continue to drive our company in 2022. So supply, supply is really the, the foundation with the supply of tissue, with the ability and the capacity to produce products, you know, with the product, uh, we're, you know, we're able to generate sales revenue. The revenue of course is the result of having the supply of products in demand. We have a very diversified portfolio with uh, strategic partners uh, participating in numerous market segments. So we're able to enjoy sales revenue from numerous, numerous specialties. Now sustainability is achieved as we drive revenue as well as manage our costs. And we will, that means we are profitable. So we will not need have the need for additional outside capital. And then of course, profitability leads to scale and allow us to continue our growth plans. So how did we do in 2021 against the four S's? So on the supply side, we continue to um, secure more sourcing agreements for human tissue from more, uh, more uh, recovery partners. We also completed our phase one expansion on time and on budget. And again, this provided us the ability to store more donors as well as distribute more products. On the sales revenue side, as you've already, you, as we've already uh, 
shown you, 20% growth overall as a company. Uh, and then, of course, within the divisions, uh, growth as high as 33% with our buyer inside. Our sales revenue continues to grow along with our strategic as well as distribution partners. We have adequate supply. We've added new products and uh, we'll continue to uh, grow the top line uh, sales. Sustainability, the restructuring of our desale commercial operations makes us more efficient and allows us to focus. And then the cash that we have on hand allows us to move forward with our plans without the need for any additional investment. And then scale, we'll look at continue to look at growth opportunities, uh, not only as a management team, but also with our commercially focused board to as, as the marketplace return to normalcy post-pandemic. The phase one expansion, you know, capacity has been an issue for our, our San Antonio organization. Historically, um, we, ha we had issues where we were on back order with products. So it was very important that we address the capacity issue. So in 2021, we completed our phase one physical plan expansion. This provided additional donor storage facilities, provided a more efficient distribution facility, and adding the two additional clean rooms uh, provides us more 50% more processing flexibility and our increases our revenue um, potential uh, to over $30 million. Phase one also gives us the flexibility to decide when we should initiate our phase two expansion, which would, ex which would meet our needs for the next four to seven years. So at this point, I'd like to turn the meeting over to David Koch, and he will describe to you our excellent 2021 financial performance. Hey, thank you, Danny. Um, start our review with, with the P&L, our income statement. Um, for the year, as Danny mentioned, sales revenue for the group was up 20%. Um, overall, our shipments in the United States increased uh, 36% from 2020 levels. And the key driver for this growth obviously was a bio rent segment, which returned 33% sales growth, you know, taking share in a market that's growing 14%. Um, having that uh, capacity of the phase one expansion uh, aided in the growth and the additional donor storage, it provided additional distribution um, in the additional clean rooms. Um, as we kind of break down the year quarter by quarter, um, First quarter of 2021 was a, a difficult quarter for most companies in healthcare related to um, the vaccine rollout really hadn't begun. So it was a challenging quarter for the business. Uh, second quarter, um, we traded ahead of expectations, you know, as the vaccine rollout in the United States uh, really allowed us to start to engage um, the, the backlog of elective surgeries generated during the pandemic. Uh, and we thought we were on a roll at that point, you know, and then what happens? Then, then we roll into the, the Delta variant, um, which that did affect our uh, trading in the third and early fourth quarter. Um, but we rebounded positively in November and December from those temporarily reduced levels. Um, so in a, you know, at a pandemic challenged year to return overall 20% growth, very pleased with that. Um, as we go down the balance sheet, um, our uh, gross margins decreased slightly from 2020 levels uh, to 43%. They were 46% in uh, 2021, I mean, 2020, uh, excuse me. You know, like many companies in healthcare, last year, uh, we experienced supply chain pressures that affected our margins. Um, in addition, we proactively managed our balance sheet uh, by transferring some surplus tissue at a reduced fee, which temporarily reduced our gross margins. Those transfers will not recur in 2022. And to address those cost pressures, we implemented a price increase in the bio rent segment in uh, this year, 2022, in January. Um, so we see those margins returning to the historical level. Um, Looking at our admin expenses, you know, the financial benefit of the restructuring can be seen in the $351,000 decrease in admin expenses 
um, as compared to the prior year. It's, it's a direct increase to our sustainability. The exceptional items uh, relate to the, the restructuring of the desal division that we disclosed last January. And then um, the effects of the winter storm in February, what we call snowmageddon, um, that affected our San Antonio operations. Um, the combination of sales growth and tight expense management created operating leverage. As, as our adjusted operating loss decreased 23% on a 20% sales increase, when you look at our adjusted EBITDA loss, it decreased 31% on a 20% uh, sales revenue increase. Flipping over to the balance sheet, um, as we've discussed, our cash balance at the end of the period was $7.7 .7 million. And with the phase one expansion complete and our reduced burn rate, the cash balance uh, from the placing in June of 2020 will fund the company to profitability. And the other working capital accounts, I'll highlight uh, briefly um, uh, our inventory turnover. You, you can note there, our inventory was basically flat um, year on year uh, as sales growth grew 20%. So our inventory turnover uh, increased from 0.9x to 1.2x uh, in the period. We were more efficient managing that inventory. Collections were stable around 54 days in each period and our trade accounts receivable. Um, going down the asset side, the, the the R and D tax credits, we do uh, see that continuing to decline over time, as the group changes its its focus, you know, from R and D to commercialization. That will naturally decline. Flipping over to the to the right hand side of the balance sheet, um, the, the financing through mid cap, that's interest only through um, second half of 2023, and of course we have covenants associated with that financing and those covenants are, are comfortably met. Um, we disclosed in our trading update uh, in January of this year that uh, we had an option to increase the revolving credit facility from $3 million to $5 million. So we exercised that option. I just want to you know, emphasize that that financing was not part of our, not required by our business plan. It just seemed prudent to have um, the additional uh, revolving credit facility. So not a requirement, but uh, uh, a nice to have. So um, in summary, very pleased with our 21 results as the group began to recover from the pandemic. Uh, we see this as a strong down payment on our path to sustainability. <clears throat> so in, in summary, I, hopefully what you've seen is that we've made significant progress on our forest strategy whether it's in tissue supply, uh, processing capacity, revenue growth, uh, expanded our product portfolio, uh, continue to look at operational efficiencies. We completed our phase one uh, expansion plans uh, and that meets our capacity needs for the near term. Our buy rents products uh, are in demand as we captured market share and we expect uh, this to certainly to continue, this growth to continue as, uh, as we return uh, to normalcy uh, post pandemic. Our detail uh, product uh, platform, the commercial re restructuring is designed to stimulate growth and provide greater market focus and put this business also back on the same trajectory as, as our other business. Our cash profile meets our needs uh, under our current plans. So there's no expectation of a, the need for additional outside capital. Analysts' uh, expectations for the performance of tissue regenics is 20% uh, growth. And we are positioned for profitability, which will, of course, drive uh, sustainable shareholder value. So in summary, uh, we've seen growth in 2021 during very difficult periods, and we expect that to continue on as we move into 2022 and beyond. So at this point, that's the end of our presentation. 
and uh, we'll be ready to take some questions. Daniel, David, that's great. Thank you very much indeed for your presentation this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, but just while Daniel and David take a few moments to review those questions submitted already, I would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Daniel, David, as you can see, we've received a number of pre-submitted questions, as well as a number that have come through during the live presentation and thank you to all investors for submitting their questions mm -hmm. if i could please ask you to read out the questions and give a response where it's appropriate to do so and then i'll pick up from you at the end thank you sure uh first question we have um do you see any opportunities for merger and acquisition within 2022 uh, 2023 Daniel, we'll take that one well um certainly uh we concern can certainly uh, consider any opportunities. Uh, at, you know, we will be opportunistic, uh, looking uh, looking around for merger and acquisition opportunities. Uh, we are a publicly traded company, so uh, a lot of things can happen. Uh, but uh, certainly, uh, that is something that we will uh, keep our eyes uh, uh, open. Uh, but right now, there are currently no plans. Uh, second question, um, the company's share price has dropped significantly since the January 2022 RNS, summarizing the 2021 performance. The market clearly believes that a further share offer will be required to raise sufficient cash to see the company through to sustain positive operating cash flow. Could the board please comment on how cash will be generated over the next 24 months? Um, so hopefully in this presentation today, um, we've shed some light on our cash uh, position, the growth the business has seen, um, and our belief that the funding that we currently have uh, will see the company through to, uh, to the profitability. Um, you know, the share price decline, one could surmise it relates to the, the general downturn in equities, um, the geopolitical concerns that the market's uh, facing right now. Um, you know, 20% growth for our business in the in in 2021 in the face of an ongoing pandemic uh, in, in a marketplace that's growing 14% is uh, um, our board believes outstanding performance. Um, if, if you tried to pick a condition that would be worse for our business at tissue regenics than um, a cessation in elective surgeries, it would be difficult to do so because our business is almost entirely elective surgery based. So having uh, the kind of performance we did in the face of that um, limitations on elective surgery was, uh, you know, our board believes an outstanding performance in the year. And, you know, that growth will continue to drive um, profitability and then cash generation. Uh, the next one, in the current inflationary environment, is the company protecting our margins through price increase across the product range? And yeah, we, we did uh, discuss that in the income statement review that uh, we actually did for the first time in the company history, uh, implement a price increase in the in the bio rent segment in, uh, that just went into effect in uh, 2022. Oh, um, between 2015, here's a question, uh, and 2019, the business grew at a compound annual growth rate of 74%. The 2020 performance of being flat versus 2019 was even more impressive under the circumstances. In that context, 2021 was poor, and the market has annihilated the share price. Does the board believe it has the team and the know-how to take this business, a growth business, back to the earlier levels of growth. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, so the, I'll respond and Danny may wanna chime in um, as we address this. Um, you know, the, the sales for the turnover for the group in the year ended January 31st, 2016, and I believe was on the order of 800,000 pounds sterling. Um, very, very small number and easy to grow uh, 100% on a very small base. Um, as we've discussed, the, the, the 
a growth of 20 percent, 33 percent in the bio rent segment um, in the face of a ongoing pandemic and a um, Delta variant, uh, Omicron and staffing shortages. Um, our board believes is outstanding performance. Um, you know, the share price performance is, uh, you know, all we can con control as managers of the enterprise is the trading. Um, and we feel like we've done a really good job delivering solid uh, trading results in 2021. Um, and eventually the share price will, as we continue to deliver on the four S's, the share price will reflect reflect that. Um, I think the only thing I'd like to add is, you know, 2015 to 2019, yes, you know, that was more normal market conditions. We have performed quite well uh, during some very difficult market conditions. I also, you know, uh, you know, asked one to look at, um, you know, how, how much uh, this commercially focused management team not only looks at top line, but also looks at how much we spend and, and how much uh, and how much we've uh, done to control uh, our, our expenses. So uh, a lot of different things, but uh, thank you for that question. Uh, next question. As the company heavily relies on human tissue donations to manufacture its products, during these turbulent times, has the company experienced or currently experiencing any supply issues with regards to securing human tissue donations? I'll take that, yeah. Um, so the, the answer to that is uh, yes. Um, um, as as uh, some of you may or may not be aware, uh, COVID uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, seems to affect the United States at uh, several months um, um, after it affects the UK as well as the EU. And when COVID first uh, arrived on the U.S. shores, uh, it affected the Northeast, it essentially paralyzed the, the Northeast. And we saw COVID as it moved around the country, um, affecting um, you know, all sorts of businesses. And that effect did affect our recoveries. So we had to be resilient. We also had to be uh, flexible. Uh, not only did we rely on uh, enhance our relationships with our existing recovery partners in areas that uh, that weren't weren't affected by by COVID, but we also brought on more recovery agencies. So the thing is, uh, what we managed to do we, was we, it was this is a supply chain issue. We managed through it. Uh, we had the management team that could um, could find other sources of tissue. So uh, we've had and it did not cause any uh, disruptions to our business. Uh, can you please throw some light on what the board sees as the major factors that will impact the growth in sales for the company in the future? Go ahead. Um, Major, I mean, as you can, you know, looking at the 20% growth that we've shown um, this year, um, you know, it's about following our four S's and delivering on sales revenue is about having the right products and the right supply at the right time. And we've got the supply in place. We've got the strategic partners that can help deliver the sales revenue. Having the reorganization of our D cell organization um, is pretty exciting. There's a anecdote you know danny should tell regarding the um some of the early days results we're having with that that um uh, give confidence as we look forward into the sales potential for diesel i just have to think about you know again the all the issues we face over the past uh, two years so yeah you know, again i don't know how many other major factors we can can face uh pandemic which which uh disrupted elective surgeries or, or, or postponed elective surgeries. Um, as David mentioned, we had, uh, you know, we had a deal, uh, we had a deal with a, um, um, with a uh, ransomware issue back in January of uh, 2020. We dealt with Snowmageddon. So, so I'm just, uh, I think we've developed, uh, we've been able as a management team to address a number of different factors. And again, be resourceful, take, take advantage of all of our collective experiences to 
uh, to find ways to continue to grow this business. Talk about the, the D cell on the, the 1660. Oh, the 1660. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, one of the things about uh, the D cell uh, business, you know, this restructuring, um, you know, we're very confident that we're going to be able to put that, that, uh, that technology platform, that processing platform back on the right trajectory. Between 2019 and 20, uh, 20, uh, 2021, um, well, one of the things we did, and one of the reasons we did that this, this reorganization was that uh, we worked with an outside consulting group and they, um, you know, one of their observations was, you just need more distribution. You know, you have a vertically, you know, we knew we had this vertically oriented uh, sales uh, structure that uh, that really did not have a big enough footprint across the United States. So we've now flattened it. We've now uh, moved uh, the three layers of management to one layer of management. So now we have better coverage across the United States. And these regional sales managers are what their focus is to acquire more uh, distributors. So between 2019 and 2021, we added 16 new distributors and the D-cell to, to represent the D-cell product line. In the three months since we've implemented this reorganization, we've added 16 new distributors. So in the last three months, we've been able to add uh, the same number of distributors as the organization did and the, the prior organization did in the last three years. Again, what, you know, what does this achieve? Our regional sales managers are closer to the customer as well as our sales channel. So uh, we believe that this is really going to help drive this business forward. Uh, has your CFO considered a share consolidation as recent stock split announcements by global tech companies have demonstrated perception matter and trading at three tenths of a penny is not a good luck? Um, yes. That uh, share consolidation is something that the, the group actively um, uh, considers at the board level, at the advisor level, uh, and within our shareholder base. And so it is something that is uh, of continual uh, review and we're continually you know, evaluating the situation. So we are um, always evaluating that. The next question. <clears throat> the next question is: uh, Congratulations to the executive team on the previous year's results. As you now move positively to the sales revenue stage, please can you provide guidance as to how 2022 has started in comparison to the same period last year? Please, would the board give consideration to providing a quarterly trading update, which would give greater transparency and understanding to the market? Thank you. So um, there is, you know, we can't give forward looking statements, but there is guidance in the market uh, for our shares in our sales revenue of about a sales growth in the mid 20s, 20 percentage, uh, mid 20 percent growth range. We're comfortable with that guidance. Um, so if, if that helps from a planning uh, perfect uh, uh, perception, that's where we are in terms of the guidance and that's good feedback on the quarterly trading update and it's something we'll consider at the board. Um, next one. You have stated we're fully funded to profitability. When do you expect this to be notwithstanding there may be unexpected bumps in the road as demonstrated with COVID? That was a much longer bump than anybody anticipated. Uh, you know, I think in, in our sector, it was commonly modeled in 2021 that the um, pandemic would be, you know, over in the second half of, of the year. Um, and obviously that didn't happen because nobody saw Delta and then Omicron. Um, so, uh, but those, those market forecasts foresee profitability in 2022 for the group. And, you know, we, um, uh, we're in line with those market forecasts for profitability within 2022. Um, is any part of the 12 million 
administration costs a one-off related to the expansion of facilities. If not then, then it seems while you have enough cash for current operations, you don't have enough to invest in further growth of the business. Um, so, you know, the facilities cost is in our capital expenditures. It's, it's typically not running through the income statement. Um, so, you know, obviously to offset those administration administrative expenses, you have sales revenue. Um, I think for the, the year, our adjusted EBITDA loss is on the order of $2.9 million. Um, so with 7.7 .7, uh, million in, in the bank, you can, you know, figure out what the cash runway is with the current, you know, uh, with the current sales revenue. And obviously um, the market forecasts sales revenue to con continue to grow. Um, so we feel comfortable with our cash balance. I'm going to do this. Yeah. How will Geislick Pharma AG further advance the science on Orthopure XT? And can the market be expanded beyond the Italian market for this product? Um, so, uh, so as part of our arrangement with Geislick uh, for the Italian market, the exclusivity, um, they're investing in some uh, generating additional clinical data regarding the the use and performance of the Orthopure XT uh, in specifically with uh, some noted uh, Italian uh, clinicians. So we're, we're actually quite excited about that. Uh, really, it is a testimony to uh, Geislitz's uh, confidence in this product that they're also willing to invest um, in, in, um, in the business alongside with tissue regenics. And can the market be expanded beyond the Italian market? Uh, yes, that is certainly part of the plan. We have the CE mark in the EU, and uh, we are uh, in the process of setting up additional distribution arrangements with other markets uh, within the uh, within the EU or any markets which accept the uh, CE mark. Um. Let's see. Can you clarify what the net cash position is allowing for the term loan and current borrowings? Uh, it's looking at our publicly disclosed um, cash balance and then netting out the, the, the debt and just looking for the movements between um, the cash balance in the from the December 2020, June of 2021 and then December 2021. Yeah. What's up? <clears throat> um, there's a question here about most impressive read about your cardiac D cell heart valve product, which appears to have many advantages. How are sales of this product uh, going and what are you doing to promote it more widely? So one of the things uh, that um, there was, uh, there was some uh, clinical work that was done on the cardiac uh, D cell heart valve product, but it was never commercialized. So um, uh, this was a product that is currently a technology that is currently uh, um, put on hold um, as part of our four S's. When we look at the sustainability uh, um, uh, goal, um, and we looked at the amount of investment that would have needed that would have been needed to take this technology platform to the uh, into the commercial marketplace uh, it was uh, decided that we were going to put this technology program on hold for the at least for the near-term future So, so can you confirm that no placing or fundraise is needed given you are about to go into profit? I, I think we've discussed that in great detail. Um, there is a trend for 2H gross margins to fall. Are there any particular factors that are causing this to occur? Is it addressable? I think we've discussed that in terms of what we've done to um, protect our, our gross margins. Um, you know, one, one item that it's a small point, but a good uh, to talk about sustainability and, and focus on details is we introduced our Matrix ND product in, um, in 2021. And that's a, a dermis product that um, 
maybe Danny talk a little bit about that and you know the effect that has on our you know our, the gift of tissue donation and margins. Yeah, so there, there's two aspects. You know, again, we are we're the stewards of the gift of tissue donation. So we're trying to make sure that when when a, uh, a family donates a loved one, that we utilize their the, the tissue to improve uh, um, uh, as many patients, improve their quality of lives and, and as many patients as possible. So um, with the ND product, uh, we were able to more fully utilize uh, the donated dermal tissue. So it was a welcome addition to our, to our product line. Um, and, and as you can imagine, if we're more fully utilizing uh, the, the donors that it's, again, it serves a kind of a twofold uh, uh, you know, a twofold um, uh, objective: uh, honoring the gift of human tissue donation, as well as uh, as well as addressing our sustain sustainability goal. Uh, more importantly, of course, uh, in the marketplace, it, it was desired by our strategic partners in the dental uh, segment, and uh, they were the ones who uh, really embraced this product, uh, this product line addition. Uh, funded through to profitability is very good. However, do you believe future profits will also be sufficient to fund planned expansion? Now, we've discussed, I think, probably at a one of the investor meet companies uh, his, uh, recently in our interim results, or that maybe last year in in April. Um, you know, we're funded through to profitability with the with the capital from the the placing. Uh, we may pursue. Of non-dilutive financing for uh, our facility expansion um, when that's required. Um, our uh, industry supports um, hard assets that are readily lendable. Um, we've got solid accounts receivable with very good credit customers, uh, inventory that has a, a real um, a decent stick value. Uh, easily uh, valued in hard assets that are difficult to replace. So, you know, in our industry, it is common to, for people to use um, debt to finance that because it has a lower cost of capital and it's non-dilutive. So it's likely that uh, when, when as and if it becomes time for that facility expansion, that we will pursue non-dilutive financing for that. Um, which one do you want to do? Hmm. Pick one that you want to do. Um, can you please give us an idea about new products, product extensions that we might see this year? Um, they're kind of uh, pretty much across the board. Uh, so you, you know, we talk about our technology uh, platforms, whether it's D-cell virants as well as the perinatal or the birth tissue, uh, we will continue to add products in, in each of those uh, categories. Uh, this, this past year, of course, we focused more on our, on our, our uh, adding product line additions to our D-cell business, but uh, next year uh, it will be, um, you'll see additional products across uh, all, three, uh, all three platforms. I think we're about out of time. Daniel, David, I was going to say thank you very much for being so generous of your time and addressing all of those questions that you can have come through from investors this afternoon. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, the company will have the opportunity to review all of the questions submitted today and we'll publish any additional responses on the InvestorMeet company platform where it's appropriate to do so. Daniel, David, perhaps before redirecting investors to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to the company, if I could please ask you for a few closing comments to wrap up with. Thank you. I think uh, hopefully what uh, all of the investors have heard today is that uh, the, this management team uh, has adopted the, the 4S strategy of, of, um, of supply, sales revenue, sustainability, and scale. Uh, it is, a, it is a, a growth strategy that goes throughout our organization. We've seen the, the, the benefits of that uh, where we saw 20 and 2021, 20% growth uh, as we uh, as we continue to increase our market share 
uh, within the, the marketplace. We're making progress uh, toward uh, sustainability. Uh, we're reorganizing our desell uh, business. So um, hopefully uh, the investors see that uh, this company is on a nice pathway uh, of growth as well as sustainability. That's great. Daniel, David, thank you very much indeed for updating investors this afternoon. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. It's only take a few moments to complete and I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Tissue Regenics PRC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good afternoon to you all.